Hey everyone, uh, we're back with the YouTube videos. Yeah, we took a bit of a hiatus. Uh, we're off for almost two years, um, or more than two years actually. And but we're back. We're back just as previously scheduled. Uh, so we're going to be getting those uh, YouTube videos out. We're more focused on food, so the data that we're working will will be food related. Uh, since uh, what we do is uh, food ERP. However, uh, it's Business Central that we're focusing on. So what I'm going to do now in the next couple of videos is go into what was released in 2023 or like uh, wave one, 23, and just kind of pick off the most interesting parts and make uh, short videos about those. So today uh, we're going to get into uh, statistical accounts. So what they added, um, if you guys remember, we have something uh, called account schedules um, and or they've been renamed for those who are new to this as financial reports, which is a little bit more descriptive than account schedules, uh, but account schedules, uh, actually account schedules is more descriptive, financial report is more sellable, whatever. Uh, inside the financial reports, we, we could put, uh, of course, GL um, and list them out as rows, and then you have the columns as well. So we would have something like uh, sales, and that would be grouping all the sales GLs, and over here you'd have maybe um, net change uh, for that, that might be like $100,000. And the period was maybe like 1124 to 13124. Um, so so the, uh, the financial report or the account schedule, you could be listing out the GLs. Um, and, the, you know, an obvious one would be put cost of goods sold. So maybe that's 80,000. And then the net, which would be a formula, would be 20,000. So this is what you could do in an account schedule. And I have a video on account schedules if you're interested in, in looking at that. Um, but <clears throat> what they added to account schedules was something called statistical accounts. Um, so I'll put that here, like stat account. And what is that? A statistical account is an account that you can create that does not post into the GL. So you can say, like one good example would be headcount. So if I create, uh, and I'm gonna do this in the video, uh, if I create an account called headcount, I can actually post transactions. So I can say in January, our headcount was, let's say 60, and then in February, our headcount was 80. I added 20 people. Um, and so I have now transactions inside my headcount account. And what I can do with these transactions is I can put them onto the financial statement. So I can say, let's say this is net change in January. And that was that. I can put headcount in here. And the headcount in January was 60. So I could say profit. Uh, per person is you know um, twenty thousand divided by sixty, whatever. Uh, so <laughs> I'll just write twenty k over sixty, and of course you just do that with a formula. Um, <clears throat> that is really cool, actually. That means that you can take non-GL data, which you are posting, so you have a record, you have a ledger of that. And you can take all that and put that into your account schedule or financial report, and you can use that to do calculations. Interestingly enough though, uh, when I use analysis views, which is another piece in account schedules for those who know, for some reason I was unable to get the uh, statistical accounts to work with analysis views, unless that was specifically for uh, statistical accounts. But anyways, that's a little caveat. We'll get into it in the video and sort of explore it. Let's take a look. A look at the statistical accounts. 
Uh, first, I'm going to create one. So I'll go here into Finance, Statistical Accounts, New. Um, I'm going to call it Headcount. And now it's created. Now I'm going to go into the journal and post a couple entries. Again, this is um, only for like KPI like uh, information or like metrics. It will not post anything into your chart of counts or anything like that. So, uh, and this is just a journal. Uh, head count for June. Let's say we had. 75. Let's do a headcount for May as well. Let's say that was 70. So now I'm going to post this or register it. And it registered transactions for the uh, statistical account. And now I can drill into that here to see that I posted these two. Now I'm going to go and actually use this and I'm going to put it on a financial report. Uh, I, for those who have been doing this for a while, it was used to be called account schedules. Um, so I'll create a new um, income statement. I had actually done a test one, but let's say it's income uh, HC, income statement with head count. Um, and I'm going to create a new row definition for this. So I'll just go in here, select from full list to new. I'm going to call it income HC. Uh, and in here, I should be able to edit the row definition. There we go. Um, and here I'm going to put in the revenue as 10. I'll just pick my revenue accounts. Um, let's go ahead and in this case I'm just picking the GL accounts. I could of course pick the total accounts but here we go. I'll just pick these two and then I'm going to bring in the headcount. So that and here I can pick statistical account which is really handy and I'll select the head count like so and then I'll do a calculation on that say revenue by head count and often this is a useful metric so this is just a formula where we have um, 10 divided by 20 and I want to show the opposite sign here because revenue will be negative otherwise. And that should be it. So I'll go back here. Let's make sure this is saved. Um, and OK on that. The column definition, let's pick months. Uh, let's go back. So now I should have um, income statement with headcount. I'll view that and I'll put it over the month and go back here. So we can see that we have revenue for May and 70 in um, and head count, and then that's divided through with 16,000 and then we have revenue from June and divided by that. So we're using the uh, statistical accounts as just KPIs that are non-financially related and we can actually put them into the financial statements and calculate things out. They actually also work with dimensions so there's a lot you can do there. Um, so I recommend uh, starting to use that if you have a need for it. Well thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something. If you want to know more about Inecta, all the links are in the description. And don't forget to subscribe.